Hey, nonprofit leader, it's that time of year again, year-end fundraising season. Are you ready to take your campaign to the next level? One of the best ways to do that is by adding a phone call to your year-end strategy. Trust me, this will greatly accelerate your response rate and boost your income in those all-important final days. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what it takes to perfect your year-end phone call strategy. Now, let's break down exactly how you can have a perfect year-end phone calling strategy by focusing in on four key steps. Step number one, who should you call? Since year-end is such a busy time for nonprofits, you need to maximize your efforts by focusing in on the right people. If you've already sent an appeal letter to your donor list, the next step is to figure out which donors you should follow up with a phone call. On average, a well-written letter will yield a response rate of about 2 to 3%. But when you add a phone call, that response rate can jump up to 28%. Let me repeat that, 28%. So making these calls is absolutely worth your time. But you can't call everyone. So who should you prioritize? Start by calling your critical few, the 20% of your donors who give 80% of your revenue. Depending on the size of your organization, this might be anywhere from 50 to 100 names. For larger organizations, it could be 250 to 500 or more. These are your most loyal and significant supporters, so reaching out to them personally is the key. Some of these top donors might even warrant an in-person visit, but that's a topic for the next week. For now, during the busy season, phone calls will be the best option for most of your major donors. Step number two, how to prepare for the call. Once you've identified who to call, the next step is planning and preparation. If you're like most nonprofit leaders, you probably have more email addresses than phone numbers in your donor database. In fact, most nonprofits only have phone numbers for about 20 to 30% of their donors. That means you'll need to spend some time gathering phone numbers for as many of the remaining donors as possible. Don't worry if making phone calls feels intimidating at first. It's completely normal to feel awkward during those initial calls. But after a few, you'll start to develop a rhythm. I recommend setting aside two to three hours at a time for making calls. This allows you to get into a flow and makes the process more efficient. Sporadic calling makes it harder to build momentum so block out time to make several calls in one go. Timing is also crucial. You might be tempted to call donors during times that are most convenient for you, like Thursday mornings from 9 to 11 a.m. But remember, that might not be the best time for your donors. You'll often have better luck reaching people in the late afternoon or early evening when they're home from work. While evening calls might not be ideal for you, there's a reason why telemarketers call during dinner time. It's when they're most likely to get an answer. Don't worry, you're not a telemarketer. You're delivering an important message about making a difference in the lives of people in your area. So be flexible with your calling times. You might even find that weekends work well. Saturday afternoons can be an excellent time to reach donors as many people are relaxing after finishing their morning errands. Step number three, who should make the calls? 
It's often assumed that the executive director or development director should handle year-end calls. And that's absolutely true for your top-tier donors. The executive director should personally call the top 5 to 10% of donors as these individuals often want to speak directly with the decision maker. However, you don't have to make all the calls yourself. You can and should involve staff members, board members, and even volunteers. In fact, involving board members in the calling process can be incredibly powerful. It gives them a sense of ownership over the fundraising efforts and helps them build deeper connections with other donors. This shared experience can create a bond between board members and donors as they work together towards a common goal. Donors love hearing from board members and other program leaders because it makes them feel like they're getting inside information and updates directly from the people driving the work. So create a team that includes staff, board members, and possibly some high-level volunteers and train them to make these important calls. Make sure that everyone who's making calls is well briefed on the details of the campaign and has access to stories that demonstrate the impact of your organization's work. The more informed and confident the caller, the more successful the call will be. Step number four, what a say on the call. Now that you've planned and assembled your team, let's get to the actual call. When following up on a letter, sometimes it's as simple as asking, did you receive our letter? How much would you like to give? But you'll often find that donors don't remember receiving the letter or they may not have gotten it at all. That's why these phone calls are so important. They give you a chance to personally share your message. A successful call should have three elements, information, opportunity, and a clear call to action. Start by briefly reminding the donor of the problem your organization is addressing. Then, explain the exciting opportunity they have to make a difference. Donors respond better to opportunities to get involved rather than needs that must be met. Frame your ask as a chance to be part of something meaningful and impactful. Next, share some facts and figures to back up your appeal. Let the donor know how their gift will help expand or sustain the program and then make your ask. Be direct. Would you consider a gift of $1,000 or $5,000 to help us continue this important work? After you make the ask, there will likely be a moment of silence. Don't worry, that's normal. The donor is processing your request and they're considering how they can contribute. Resist the temptation and the urge to fill the silence. Let them think. If they say yes, make sure you have an easy way for them to give, such as directing them to your website or offering a text to give option. If they need more time, be sure to set a specific time for a follow-up call. Don't leave the next step open-ended or assume they'll reach out to you. It likely won't happen. If they say no, thank them sincerely and let them know you appreciate their partnership even if they're unable to give at this time. Adding fold calls to your year-end appeal can dramatically increase your response rate. Even if a donor doesn't give, the conversation is still a valuable touch point that strengthens your relationship and keeps them connected to your cause. Phone calls can be intimidating at first, but the rewards far outweigh 
the challenges. You'll build stronger connections with your donors, share your passion, and make a real difference. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there are topics you'd like to address and let this community of life changers know that you're a part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the release of the next video. If you wish to follow me on X, go to at Jim W. Dempsey. On Instagram, also go to at Jim W. Dempsey. Or if you have questions, go to fundraisingmasterminds.net forward slash Jim and Java. If you wish to be part of a community of like-minded leaders, join our Life Changers group on Facebook. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.